Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. Soon to be also, I'm setting up a custom link shortener for the Cynical Libertarian Society. So soon you will be able to also access it via the custom link shortening, shortening thingy, bobber. Anyway, it's early in the morning, I got a lot to do, my brain is a little frazzled, and I had to pump out a podcast episode today because I'm not ahead of the game right now. It's been pretty busy and this week is really busy because I'm a heterosexual white man who works for a living and unfortunately I can't just sit around the house recording podcasts waiting for Obama to put more money on my welfare debit card. So I have to go out and create value for other people in exchange for money in addition to sometimes sitting at home creating value for other people in exchange for money. Speaking of exchanging things, you need to exchange some bitcoins or some name coins for listening to this podcast. Come on, you guys. Give me some fucking Bitcoin. Give me some name coin so I can get a goddamn .bit domain. Damn it. I got. I tried looking into getting the, the name coins. It's like, why does it... Why does this shit have to be so complicated? Maybe it's more complicated than I think it is. Maybe I just haven't figured out how to do it. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. What am I supposed to be talking about today? What am I going to talk about today when I'm short of time? Here's what I'm going to talk about. I almost did an entire episode of stating the obvious about this, and then I decided it's not really worth it. But I do think it needs a little bit of thought time. I'm still sitting here drinking coffee, so you're going to hear frequent pauses as I drain my coffee cup. Just woke up. I slept in. L night before last, I got four hours of sleep between two theater gigs, and so last night I slept like crazy. Got up late this morning, and I'm still half-ass exhausted. And... Got to go unload a truck today and then go do a photo shoot. So, I'm pretty exhausted. And it's only going to get worse. All right, anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. Focus. Focus. Squirrel. Shiny object. College girl. Focus. Matt Forney, over on his blog, wrote a blog post. I think it's called... Well, wait. I can find out what it's called. So you can Google for it. Or whatever you want to do. The Manosphere is dead and you have killed it is the name of his blog post. Now, some of you have heard me mention the Manosphere. Specifically, I've talked quite a bit about the Return of Kings website, yada, yada, yada. If you don't know what the Manosphere is, you can go find it, Google it, what the fuck ever. Depending on who you ask, it's a bunch of men who want a better life for everybody, or it's a bunch of evil, heterosexual white men who work for a living and who obviously are racist, sexist, and homophobic. But, you know, it is what it is. Matt Forney published this post where he outed a couple of individuals. And by outed, I mean revealed personal details about them. One of these people goes by the name of Sunshine Mary, and I'm, I'm not sitting around doing internet research on this crap. I've read some of Sunshine Mary's blog post, and she's she presents herself as this uber-Christian woman who is obedient and subservient to her husband. You know, my husband told me not to go to this website anymore, so I don't go to this website anymore. I'm like, you know what? I... Unlike a lot of people on the internet, I've actually known women and spoken to them and been friends with them. And I find it really hard to believe that any woman would have that attitude. I've talked about this before in my discussions about how back in the day, you know, before electricity, when everybody walked uphill, how women were supposed to be so oppressed and all this other shit. I'm like, really, I want you to try... Anyway, the point is, women do not fucking just roll over and submit like that. I don't care what you read on the internet, and I don't care what you saw on television, and I don't care what the feminists tell you, because the feminists tell you that women are all oppressed and shit. Well, then if the feminists, are, if women are so fucking oppressed... Why are those feminists out there in the street protesting? Why aren't they in the kitchen, and where did they get those shoes? So, the very fact that the feminists are on the internet screeching and out in the street screeching and all this other shit rather illustrates the point that, no, women don't just roll over to oppression quite that easily. Now, certainly humans do roll over to oppression. It's called the state. But... You know, this idea that women are so obedient that, you know, if your husband tells you never to look at a website again, that you're never going to look at a website 
I find that a little fucking far-fetched. So anyhow, Sunshine Mary presents herself as this obedient little Christian girl who obeys her man. And according, this is all according to Matt Forney's blog post. Like I said, I'm not fucking doing research on these people. She claims that she has six children. Well, anyway, Matt Forney has declared that his research indicates that she's not an obedient housewife. She, in fact, wears the pants in the family, and she only has two kids. And so she was posting photos of children that were not hers on her blog and claiming they were, yada, yada, yada. The other person he outed is somebody called Danny504, I think. I've also read some of his blog posts. Danny, my, my impression of Danny from what I've seen of him is that he's a shit talker who can't back it up. He claims that he's fucking all these women. And I've seen, he's posted pictures of himself and I find it really hard to believe that he's fucking hundreds of women. But anyway, Matt claims that Danny sent Matt an email saying, if you out Sunshine Mary... I'm going to make sure you're sorry for this or whatever. The fucking email is in the blog post if you care. Anyway, basically, Matt said he was going to out Sunshine Mary. Danny sent Matt an email saying, if you out Sunshine Mary, I'm going to make your life miserable because I'm badass like that. Which makes me think Danny must be really fucking stupid. Because... And, and for those of you who are saying, this is just a bunch of girl drama. Yes. Yes, it is. And we're getting to that. If your reaction to everything I've said so far is that this sounds like a couple of, like, three 14-year-old girls arguing over their dolls, that is absolutely the correct fucking response. <laughs> so Danny sends Matt this email, don't out. So anyway, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, Matt Forney is the guy who wrote blog posts about how women don't need self-esteem. He recently wrote one about how women are not as intelligent as men. I mean, the idea that you could intimidate Matt Forney into not outing somebody is pretty laughable. Because Matt Forney's not really sitting around being concerned about what other people think about him. And this indicates to me that Danny 504 or 1217 or whatever the fuck he is must be pretty fucking stupid in addition to being short, ugly, and bald and has giant ass fucking glasses he's got these big ass glasses like I used to wear when I was in high school it's fucking hilarious alright, anyway now, let's, let's get out let's dig ourselves out of the 14 year old girl pet I don't personally hate any of these people. I'm not taking sides. I don't, you know, the Danny and Sunshine Mary are irrelevant to me. I read Fat Matt. I read Fat Morney. <laughs> Fat Morney. <laughs> I read Matt Forney because a lot of his stuff is pretty interesting. And he often makes some good points. And it's good. Matt Forney is one of those people that I like reading him when I agree with him, when I even when I disagree with him, because he articulates himself pretty well. He presents unique perspectives. And, you know, it, it's, it's, he's a really good sounding board to read and look at his ideas and analyze them, and it pushes your thought process, which is the point. I mean, Sunshine Mary, what I've, what I've read of hers is never thought-provoking. It's like, oh, today my husband told me to do something, so I did it. I mean, that's nice, but you're not, you know, you're not pushing my brain boundaries. And Danny's blog post is like, yeah, today I saw a woman and I went up and I talked to her and she said, oh, you're so hot. And I took her home and I banged her. I mean, okay, well, but you're not really pushing the philosophical boundaries of my brain with, oh, that was sweet. Almost knocked the coffee cup off. Matt Forney, he can be offensive and, you know, he can be, well, to the feminazis, he's always offensive. He can be offensive, but he's always thought provoking. Like when he makes his case that women are less intelligent than men. He doesn't just say women are stupid. You know, girl bad, girl bad, boy good. Or anything. He makes a case for it, and you can go through and analyze it and think about it and break it down. So the end of all this is that 
be, being a 14-year-old girl and everything, Matt Forney, now that he's outed these people, he declares that he is leaving the Manosphere. He's the, the Manosphere being this confederation of blogs and bloggers on the internet who represent some particular point of view and yada 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 and, and because of these two people he's leaving it because the manosphere has been taken over and yada 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 and here we see even in somebody like Matt Forney because Matt Forney when I first started reading him I was like okay this guy has anarcho-capitalist tendencies later on I've seen him write some post and publish some tweets and things like that that indicate he is not a libertarian oriented person that he makes fun of libertarians and he obviously considers himself a republican and a conservative from what I've seen I get that impression that he considers himself a conservative republican so he's not a friend to the ANCAPs and what we see here in all of his mentality about oh I'm leaving the manosphere is we still see the vestiges of statism the need to be this part of something, and oh, the manosphere, whatever the fuck the manosphere is, however you define the manosphere, you know, the manosphere isn't what I want to be a part of anymore, and I'm leaving it because yada, yada, yada. And in addition to being a 14-year-old girl, this simply illustrates why this status tendency to need to be a part of something can be a limiting factor in your life. That there's not this, this is why you can't join the cynical libertarian society because as I've said before, cynical libertarians are not joiners. Matt Forney on this blog post attempts to take credit for founding the manosphere and now it's all gone bad because yada yada yada. And he's just got he's just got to leave. And it's like you know what? Maybe if you weren't a fucking statist, maybe if you didn't constantly need something bigger than yourself to give you value, maybe this wouldn't be a big deal. Maybe you would have never had to have claimed to have been a member of this manosphere thingy to begin with. And by the way, I do think I, I'm 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 going to rip on Matt Forney quite a bit, but like I said, I do consider him a valuable resource and interesting reading. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm ripping on everything the guy does. The other thing that's come out in this blog post is I've been reading through some of the comments. I haven't read all of them. Oh shit, squirrel! Hang on a second. I need to read this email. Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay, things are coming together. <sighs> mm, coffee. Hold on, my thoughts, they're, gonna, they're coming together. I know, you're out there going, why the fuck does this guy podcast when he's asleep? Because I'm an idiot, that's why. Reading through the comments and reading some of the criticisms of Matt Forney and the Manosphere and what he's doing. There's some interesting stuff in there as well. And the comments on this post are unlike usually on internet posts where it's just, you know, you go girl or you're an idiot. I mean, there's some really thoughtful, intelligent comments. If you bother to read the post, and it's a fairly long one, so you have to have an attention span, you might want to go through the comments and read those too because a number of the comments have pointed out that the Manosphere, such as it is, is killing itself by its constant obsession with girls. And this, this, I find fascinating. Fine, we're 14 minutes in. Let's get to the fascinating part. Let's get to the interesting part now that we've talked about 14-year-old girls slapping each other in the sandbox over their dollies. The Manosphere, Return of Kings, which I consider a Manosphere blog, for whatever that's worth. I don't even like Manosphere. I'm, I'm more like the red pill concept, saying it's a, a, a red pill, which to me represents rejecting the state, rejecting society as it is, and looking for the self-evident truths. Like, for example, men are attracted to skinny girls, not fat girls. Girls are attracted to men with muscles, not fat men. You know, that kind of truth, that kind of red pill. But anyway, we'll call it the Manosphere for the purpose of this podcast and to just to keep things flowing. 
accusations came up that the Manosphere is destroying itself because of its obsession with girls. Like everything in the Manosphere is about girls, how to pick up girls, what's wrong with girls, what girls should be doing. If you read Return of Kings, which I suggest you do, there's a lot of good stuff there, but a lot of it is about girls. Why are girls with short hair broken? You know, why? And I just got, here are the top five posts from the past two weeks at Return of Kings because I'm on the mailing list. Okay, here we go. Seven things you need to know about Filipina girls. How to run game in 2014. Five dating conventions that women killed. Eight essential rules for banging a single mom. And five things to do before you lose your job. Based on the titles, four of the top five posts in the last two weeks are about girls. And this is a valid criticism of the Manosphere. And it's valid criticism of anything. We're going to bring this back. This is all going to come home in a minute. Hang on there. I know you're suffering through the fucking 14-year-old girl drama and my shitty speaking abilities early in the morning. The red pill, the Manosphere needs to be about more than just girls. Any well-rounded person needs to be about more than just girls. Now, if Return of Kings wants to be a blog exclusively about girls, what's wrong with them and how to pick them up and how to have sex with them, there's nothing wrong with that because blogs can be focused, right? You can have a blog that's very focused on one specific topic, like girls, that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if Return of Kings wants to be a well-rounded blog, and I think it's a fairly well-rounded blog already, I think it needs to focus on more than just girls. <clears throat> and the application here for you to take forward in life is that anything, anybody who wants to be well-rounded needs to focus on more than one thing. And the criticisms are that the Manosphere, by focusing in so goddamn much on everything that girls are doing, is, while claiming that girls need to sit down and shut up, making girls the center of their lives. And I think this is a valid criticism. And we can apply this to ourselves as ANCAPs. And this is something I've talked about before on Stating the Obvious. And this is something Michael Dean and Nima, Va yeah, Nima Vidati talk about on Freedom Fiends a lot. Is not just coming on the radio, not just coming on your podcast, not just coming on your website and constantly bitching about the state, but talking about the things that we would talk about if there were no state. Doing the things you would do if there were no state. And this is part of why, on Stating the Obvious, I like to come on and talk about shit like books I read. I'm reading another good book right now that I will definitely be talking about. And it's not, it's a fiction book. It's not a political book, philosophy book, anything else like that. You know, talking about television, talking about movies, talking about books, talking about going bike riding. By allowing... By allowing the state to rule your conversations and your life and your thought, as an ANCAP, you're just falling more into the trap. That doesn't say you should stop bitching about the state. It's to say you shouldn't bitch about the state all the fucking time. As I've said before, turn off the computer, go outside, get a life. And this same criticism has been leveled at the Manosphere, about at people like Matt Forney and at Return of King's website. And I think there's something legitimate to that. If you're, and what you can take away from this is that if you're, if you're going to have some kind of internet presence, if you're going to be creating a blog or a podcast or something like that, so you do need to have a focus. You can't, well, I don't want to say you can't, because that's a whole other topic, but maybe you fucking can be just scattered all over the place and still build a following. You have to be somewhat, I think you do need to be somewhat focused. But don't become so focused in what you're doing that the thing which you're focusing on becomes the center of your life and becomes the only thing you care about. The Manosphere is becoming slightly boring and repetitive and useless 
to the extent that the manosphere focuses in more and more and more only on girls and that everything becomes centered around girls. This is why like I, I would consider Captain Capitalism, Aaron Clary, to be part of the manosphere slash red pill movement. Mm, more email, great. And his focus is on economics and economic issues. But he diverges from that and goes into other things, and he keeps it fresh and interesting. And Return of Kings, if it doesn't avoid constantly focusing in on how to bang girls and what's wrong with girls, I think it could become boring and uninteresting. And that's why they've got to... Well, they don't got to do nothing. So I think it would be nice if they put an effort into expanding. And, remember, I'm just looking at the top five posts. I haven't actually hit up Return of Kings in over a month to see what exactly is there besides what's in the top five, yada, yada, yada. So I'm speaking somewhat from a place of a little bit of ignorance here. But you gotta, you just, all I'm saying here is don't go on your blog site and act like a 14-year-old girl, unless that's your shtick. I mean, I can do it because that's my shtick, right? Screaming fuck you and all that other shit. Don't go on your website, act like a 14-year-old girl, and mix things up a little bit. Expand your horizons. Don't let the thing you're bitching about, whether it's the state, or whether it's girls, or whether it's other bloggers, whatever it is. You can bitch about it, but don't let it become the center of your existence. 